Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and today I am going to take you through my art drawers. Hey everybody, so welcome to a new live stream it is december 2nd and we are back you might have noticed we got a little bit different format that we're trying out so we're gonna have some fun with that but today i thought it would be kind of fun we we're trying to figure out what to do for live stream today and um i discovered a drawer i kind of forgot about it i've just i've got art kind of tucked away all over the place and uh this drawer down here in this chest of drawers that i've got um i've got a whole bunch of stuff in there old drawings and shots from my Disney days. I've got some stuff in there from Roger Rabbit and Mulan and all kinds of stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to pull out the pile that's in there and we would just go through it together and see what's in there. Uh, but before we do that, we've got to go through our sales. We got Dustin and Nick here today with us. Hi. And Hello. Uh, so why don't we go over the sales? What do we got going on for sales, Nick? Yeah, so we've got some new sales for this weekend. Uh, first of all, we have extended our Cyber Monday, Cyber Week sale. So if you use code CYBER2022, you can get 20% off your entire order, which includes all of these other discord, discounted courses that we've got going on this week. So if you go over to the slide with the, the circles, Dustin, we've got the courses that are uh, we've got the courses that are uh, on sale. We've got how to draw a light or how to paint there light is 70% off. We've got uh, courses from Tim Hodge, uh, courses from Ronnie Williford that all are on a deep discount. Our animal drawing and painting bundle is $100 off. And, uh, you know, mythical creatures from uh, Tim Hodge is just $5. So we've got a bunch of deep discounts this weekend over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Check those out. <clears throat> also, we've got on December 17th coming up, we've got our brand new live event. Yes, uh, that's going to be fun. Drawing in animation and procreate, rather. Uh, is going to be a live six-hour workshop. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can learn more about that. That's actually selling out fast. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a bunch of character stuff. We're going to be doing all kinds of fun. You know, I'm gonna be, I'll do a little bit of beginner you know, introduction to animation, but I really want to dive into the fun stuff on that. We did that at Lightbox with a group, and uh, it was really successful. A lot of people enjoyed it, so we're going to do it again. And then last but not least, we've got three new courses that are up uh, as far to, part of our holiday sales for 50% off. If you go to creatureartteacher.com, we've got three brand new courses, oil and digital portrait painting from Ken Spiduso, animation on paper with Aaron Blaze, and design stylization with David Coleman. And those three have been extremely popular so far. So check them out, uh, creatureartteacher.com. Dot com. Dot com. And also, uh, there is, there's just one more thing. Uh, oh, yeah, this is your last chance to get uh, $1 brushes and $1 uh, photo packs. Yes. Get them all you can. Awesome. That ends Monday. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Monday. Right on. So we just got the weekend. Got the whole weekend. So I've got this drawer back here. And um, I keep, I, I, like I said, I've got, I keep art all over the place. And, um, I thought it would be fun to uh, kind of pull it, pull it all out. <laughs> I'm going to pull out the stuff from my drawers. That's nice. That's nice. So okay. let's, uh, I'm going to open it up here. Let's see what we got. It's going gonna, gonna to fall on the floor. Oh my gosh, we got a lot of stuff in here. Ah. All right. Need a hand over there? We got, boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go to the down shooter real quick, Dustin. This is, uh, we just have this as a test just so I can see if, we, if we're all set. Here's just some, this is some animation I did of Snow Bear. But um, I'm going to put this over here. And let's go to the first thing. So I know what this is right away. So if, uh, a few years back, back in 2016, I, uh, I was hired by John Lewis Company. John Lewis department stores. They do a big Christmas commercial every year. And um, I, uh, I, they hired me to, to uh, you can jump back and forth between, yeah, there you go. So they hired me uh, to do animation for this commercial. And what was really cool about the commercial is that I, it was 2D animation. I animated it on paper. But what they did was they 
they took the animation, they scanned it, colored it on the computer, and then printed out the drawings on boards and laser cut the boards out and then put each individual drawing or board into a 3D, you know, a, a miniature basically uh, set. So you had this 2D animation moving through a three-dimensional set and it had this really cool effect. So look it up. It's uh, uh, The Bear and the Hare, uh, John Lewis, and it's, uh, you can find it on YouTube. But these are some of the cutouts. That's what these are right here. So it's really, really cool. Does that go out of focus if I lift it up like that? No, it focuses. It has a okay. focus on it. So that's, these are some of the cutouts that they, they gave me. So you can see it's a board. And actually, I don't know if you can see, but the, the edges, you can see the little burn marks from where they cut it out with the laser. But these are, these are the, uh, the actual, some of the cutouts from that. This is the opening shot where he's walking along with the, with the hair on his back. There we go, right there. And here's where he looks up. This one got a little scraped over time. But he, he was looking up. This is where the snowflake lands on his nose. Let's see. Oh, here's the profile shot. Here's three, three of them in sequence. So it goes this drawing then this drawing, and then this drawing right here. That's the sequence. And if I, if you basically, if you line them up, you know, the way they, they'd stick it in the, in the ground and line up, register the feet that are on the ground, and then pan with him, and then that's, that's how that worked. Pretty darn cool. Yeah, so these are the bear and the hair, some of the bear and the hair cutout. There we go. Some of the cutouts right there. Are you putting a link mm -hmm. to it? Uh, awesome. So there's that. Actually, let me I want to make sure I cover these up nicely. There we go. I'm going to, these I'm going to put off to the side over here, actually right over here. So is this I'm a Christmas these... commercial your idea? Or no, was it... no, they came to me with the job. The, uh, it was already storyboarded. It was already laid out. I just, uh, I designed the characters and, uh, and I co-directed the animation with Dom Carolla. And then I also animated all of the bear and all of the hair in the commercial. That's in here. Oh, it's just a piece of paper. And I posted a link to it <clears throat> in all of the comment sections of the live streams on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. These are, these are for some reason, uh, these are notes that I pinned up on the wall. I don't know why this is in here. But this is when, from when we were making Brother Bear. I said, I wrote, we need to see Kenai transform. So the, obviously this is really early. <coughs> Sitka should represent nonviolence. Like he's the peacemaker. Coda is always asking a lot of questions. So this is like, like from the very beginning, putting up notes talking about character traits. Anyway, that was interesting. Okay. So, what do we got here? This is actually, I don't know if that's too dark. It's it's coming. I mean, it's a little it's a little dark, but it's yeah. Maybe we went a little too dark on here. But this is a. Uh, this is a background from Mulan. John, I can uh, try raising the ISO just. Yeah, let's let's raise the ISO just a just a tad. Just a tad. Yeah. So this is a background from Mulan. This is where uh, uh, Mulan's father kind of falls <coughs> towards camera, and, and it's raining. And uh, this is this is the shot. They ended up changing. This is the overlay. See, there's an overlay here. You want to explain what an overlay is? Yeah, so here, here's an overlay. Someone asked me the other day what, what cells were. Well, this is a cell. This is an overlay cell. It's a clear acetate, and it takes the, uh, it takes the acrylic, acrylic paint really well. So there's the background. Let me get rid of that. And then here, the cell goes over the top. That way you can have animation between the background and the cell. It, this, 
the animation will work behind the, the hairpin that, or the hair comb, the flower right there. You can have animation that goes behind it. That's why you have the cell. And then this is just a little protective cell on top. So I'm going to take this and just move this off to the side as well. Hey, Nick, can you take this and just put that right on top of the... Absolutely. Right there on the bottom? Yeah. So what do we have here? You take this. Ah, <laughs> now I've done, the, I've shown this in another video. This is, uh, now that's a little blown out. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. Okay. But this is, oh, actually, yeah, it's going to be a little blown out because we're going to be looking at all white paper the rest of the time, I think. Who Just animated Kenai in the transformation that's sequence? That, that was uh, Byron Howard. That looks good, Dustin. That was Byron Howard. Who directed? Directed uh, Tangled and Zootopia Bolt. and... And Canto. And Canto, yeah, exactly. All kinds of fun stuff. So this is the, se the section where it's uh, in the song, A Girl Worth Fighting For. And then this is where they, uh, the, the gang of three, Yao, Ling, and Chen Po, um, are singing about their, their, their dream woman, women. And it goes into this kind of uh, brushwork kanji kind of stylized animation. And so this is the section where Yao is singing. And you can see all the notes that I wrote on the side and all the charts and all kinds of stuff. You know, and he's, he's talk, talking about his battle scars here with, with the big I know that I know that lyric very well. <laughs> She'll marvel at my strength. Adore my battle scars. Yeah, there you go. And the strength <laughs> is him lifting her up and down. There she is right there. He's lifting her up and down in that shot. So if I flip through this... Let me see if I can do it. There's a lot here to flip through. Let me go up to the camera here. Okay. Oh, you gotta switch cameras. There we go. So he comes into the shot there. And he's lifting her up and down. And he opens up and shows his battle scars. <laughs> there you go. That's kind of cool. This one was really cool to get back. This is, um, this is one of my favorite shots. It was a lot of fun to animate, to animate that stylized, you know. It was very cool. This is uh, today's live stream will be fairly short one today too, if we because we're just going to go through this pile. So there's one. What else do we have here? <laughs> this is I don't know what this is. It's an old hippo drawing. On 12 field paper, no less. <laughs> I did this for a friend, actually. This wasn't anything. Someone was doing a short, and they wanted a, this kind of large hippo to eat a cookie and chew it up. So she lifts the cookie into her mouth and then choose really broad and it goes into a cycle. Can I show the first image real quick? Let me sure. Just, uh, get that photo. There we go. Should be a bit easier to see. Yeah, because the lines were so much thinner. It was a little hard yeah. To see. What was that for again? This is for a friend that they were making their own little short and they needed this little hippo eating this cookie. <laughs> and so that's what that, yeah. Someone on YouTube asked, uh, on that Yao um, <clears throat> animation, how many drawings was that? Oh my gosh, uh, well over 100. Uh, it, was, it may have been like 150, 200, something like that. It's out of focus now, Dustin. Huh? Yeah, you don't have to have it on me. Uh, it should be focused. No, the black magic. Oh, it was just a delay. Huh? Sorry. It was a delay. You refocused yeah. it. Sorry. Oh, this is all in reverse. This is, uh, I gotta, I gotta, uh, 
I've got to do this. You can show them in the down shoot. Have you ever animated effect shots or has it been exclusively character animation? That's a Twitch question. I have done effects for myself, but I've never done effects for, for like Disney or anything. So this is, um, <laughs> this is a very well um, bosomed, very big bosomed hippo for this short. And she's doing, she's doing jumping jacks. This is, they were doing this at Disney for, for uh, my friend. They were doing this short, like I said. And I can't remember what she needed it for. I think it was like an, in, maybe she was an intern at the time. And uh, wanted the character clean up. There we go. Who animated uh, Kenai in the uh, transformation sequence? We asked oh, we already, that we already Byron did that one. Howard. Byron Howard, yeah. So there we go. So let's see if I can do this one. Oh, yes. Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, am I in the center? It's a jumping jacks and she's got lots of overlap. <laughs> it's just, and it cycles, it goes up and down. You can play it back where, you know, it, it loops back into itself. So she does all these jumping jacks. <clears throat> we should shoot this one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's that. That was kind of funny. That, that was from the old, old days at Disney. All right. that down there. What are your thoughts on the movie uh, uh, Cats Don't Dance? Uh, I like it. One of my favorites. Originals. All have been, let's see, do not shoot. I don't know what that is. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is kind of cool. These are model sheets. Oh, uh, where did I put my glasses? Shoot. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> These are model sheets Oops, of Roger Rabbit. And uh, these are just keys from one of the uh, shots. This is from uh, 1988. This is from uh, the actual film. So these are all the different model sheets I had. And this because was given to you because you were animating on the I was animating, shorts. Exactly. We were doing Roger and the shorts. And uh, this is where he's keeping his ear to the, keeping his eyes peeled. And all <clears> someone just asked, do those $1 brushes that you have on sale work in Kinsta or Krita? <coughs> yes, they do. Um, as long as it's a program that imports ABR files. So they work in Procreate, they work in Clip Studio. And yes, they work in Krita as well. So if you look at the top, this is Dick's first test. So this is Dick Williams. This is, these are drawings from his first test of Roger, of, excuse me, of Roger. So that's pretty fun. One of the first, this is, these are uh, Xeroxes from the first shot that was ever animated of him, his first test. And these are different, you know, as one of the things they'll do is, you know, you have things like highlights and, and little details that go on to a character. And as a character gets smaller, you want to lose some of the details. And so what they'll do is they'll show the character at different sizes with the details that, that go on that size or drop off. And was he, Here's Roger uh, with Baby Herman. And was he the head animator for Roger Rabbit, uh, Dick? Yeah, he directed the oh, animation. Oh, he directed. Yeah. Yep. Richard Williams, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then here... There's a few drawings. They don't really flip. Let me see here. So he said that he uh, directed uh, <clears throat> the animation. The, the animation. You know who? Um, Robert uh, Zemeckis directed Robert Zemeckis. the movie. Zemeckis. Zemeckis directed the movie. So here he is going, you know, just presenting himself. 
that little known director, Robert Zemeckis. Yes. Can you just hold, hold a frame real quick? Get there you go. Whatever happened okay. to that guy? Yeah. There. There's only a couple of, frame, of pieces of paper there, so it's a little hard to flip. But there you go. But I've got lots and lots of Roger Rabbit stuff in here. These are all from uh, the original film because when I started at Disney, we, uh, one of the first projects or the first project I worked on was a Roger Rabbit short called Roller Coaster Rabbit. And so these are all the model sheets that I kept around my desk so I knew his expressions, knew how to draw him. And it was during that production that I was promoted to animator. <clears throat> I became an animator during that production. So I started out as a cleanup artist. I was working under an animator named Mark Kausler. And Mark was a, is a really great kind of Tex Avery, really broad type animator. Roger Rabbit was perfect for him. And uh, he did a lot of drawings like this, <laughs> like that. <laughs> And uh, so it really taught me a lot on how broad you can go and how much fun you can have with it. Was a good majority of the crew that worked on the shorts, uh, this is my own personal question, by the way, did uh, the majority of the crew that worked on the shorts also work on the movie beforehand? Not necessarily, no. But we're the, we had the, a couple, just a couple. And the folks that um, worked on the shorts, whether it be better from the, from the original film as well as new newcomers into the shorts were they given the same content uh references as the people from the film like all all this that you that you have here well these the these drawings are from the original film yeah and yeah. Did, did all the crew members for the shorts get oh yeah I'm, i would yeah because that's why these are xeroxes because uh everyone was given these packets we all went off of these these drawings as reference for what we what we did in the shorts, was this a, a common thing? Because I know that there's there's been like a couple of shorts as well as sequels that are based off of um, big animated features. Um, do they uh, do they usually bring references to the next project over? Yeah. Yep. Especially if we have to, you know, match it. Did you create model sheets for Snow Bear? And if so, do you ever plan on sharing them? Um, I created a couple of model sheets of Glenn, the, the polar bear. Um, but, uh, uh, yes, we will share them. I've shared them before. I, um, uh, I, I just, I have him in my head, so I haven't gone really extensive on the model sheets. But what I'll, I'll probably do is go through and pick out some of my favorite animation. And that's what, we, th what these are here. You'll go through and pick out some of the favorite animation and then... And then uh, reproduce the keys, the key drawings from, that, the, from those shots. And then you can create model sheets like that. And that's what we'll probably do with Snow Bear for that, reference, you know, for people that might want to try animating them themselves. So these are model sheets from Roger Rabbit. Uh, can you tell the difference between Glenn Keane's and James Baxter's animations and their acting? Yes. Yes, I can. Everybody has their own style. All what right. would you say was your, your uh, preferred style? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, how to, I don't know how to put it into words. My, my you know, tends to not be broad. It tends to be a little bit more realistic on the, on the you know. And some, some, some styles are like more wild and crazy. Some are more. Yeah. So this is a, sh <laughs> this is a shot where Roger uh, in Roller Coaster Rabbit um, it takes place at the at the carnival, and Roger ends up in the shooting gallery, and um, he okay, gets <laughs> fire, away. fire away. And this is where he gets completely full of Swiss cheese. Twitch question: What is a cleanup artist? A cleanup artist is someone that takes the animator's rough drawings, because as an animator, you don't draw the pristine, beautiful lines that you see. You know, if you look at the old Lion King or Beauty and the Beast or Sleeping Beauty or any of those old films, those clean, beautiful drawings that you see up on the movie screen, those aren't done by the animator. The animator, it's really, uh, an animator's job 
I was an animator. One of my, my job was to do the acting, to come up with the acting and rough it all out. So I would, I would do rough drawings. They would be as, as nice as I could make them, but I needed to get through it quickly so that I could animate you know, the shots that were given to me. And then I would hand that off to an assistant and that assistant has assistants. So I usually would have four to five people that would follow me up and they would redraw all of my rough drawings and clean them up. And so those would be cleaned up drawings and those are the actual drawings that make it on the screen. You don't actually see mine or other rough animators rough drawings. You see the cleanup animators drawings. Did you, uh, did you ever draw or animate Jessica Rabbit? Yes, uh, just a couple of times. But here, here's Roger full of completely uh, shot up like Swiss cheese. Right there. For the, <laughs> this uh, is where he comes crawling out of the shooting gallery. And talking about um, cl the clean lines, isn't that why the um, older films like the, Aristoc the Aristocats and uh, Robin Hood, uh, those films of that uh, timeline, uh, they had rougher edges because they didn't do as much cleanup then? Yeah, exactly. They, they, they did what's called rub downs on those because they, they were trying to save time. That's why, that's why the whole Xerox process came about because back in the old, old days, the, the drawings would get cleaned up and then they would go to the ink and paint department and an inker would put a piece of acetate because there was no scanning or anything like that. So they'd put a net piece of acetate over the cleaned up drawing and they would trace it with ink and they would ink the acetate and then flip it over and they would paint the back. And so that's how Cinderella and Bambi and Pinocchio and all those movies were made. Extremely labor intensive. It takes hundreds of people to do it. Um, but then, back in the 60s, they came up with the Xerox process. So if you look at films like uh, 101 Dalmatians, which is a perfect example, which I think is the first Xerox movie, they, um, rather than inking everything, they Xeroxed it right onto the acetate. So they, they got rid of the inking process, which saved an incredible amount of time and money. And then they flip it over and then they would paint the back. Now the cleanup process on the drawings getting to that point, they, they, if you look at the backgrounds in that film from an, a, an artistic aesthetic, the art direction, they wanted it to have kind of a rough feel. If you look at the backgrounds there, they're basically washes of color with, with ink lines over the top of them. So they wanted the character uh, look to, to look the same. So they kept the drawings a little bit rough. So the animators animated it you know, fairly cleanly, but there were still sketchy lines around them. And then the cleanup artists would come in and they would rub them down with an eraser, just lightly to get rid of some of the extra lines and maybe clean up a little bit on the original animator's drawings. And then that's what made it into the film. And that's why there's a little bit of scratchiness, a little bit of line crawl, which I love. I really like that. Um, it, it, it really kind of emphasizes the idea that it's handmade. But so these are some of the Roger Rabbit drawings that I'd done for that. Let's see what else we have here. What do we else do we have in the pike here? Oh, so this is this is uh, a, one of my first shots I ever did as an animator after I got promoted. This is um, Roger. Let me flip this real quick. See if it's. <laughs> Hardly anything happens. So what's happening in this is Roger's in a roller coaster and it's going really fast. So his ears are flapping behind him and his cheeks are flapping. Let me get it focused on. So a little more to your left. There you go. Focus and go. So he blinks a couple times, but that's <laughs> that's all that really happens. This may have been my Second shot, look, oh, you can also see that his bow tie, his bow tie is flapping in the wind too. How did you manage to keep all these drawings? Disney allowed us to take a few of our rough shots um, when we would finish a uh, production. So, uh, so that's what I did. I, I kept several shots from every production I worked on. How was working with Phil Niblink? Uh, I didn't work directly with Phil Niblink. He worked in California and I worked in Florida. I was at the Florida studio. So this is super cool. This one right here. 
This one actually changes pegs. This is super thick. So the Rescuers Down Under, which is the first feature film I ever worked on. Look how many drawings are here. This is about 250 drawings right here. It's a that's, thick that's pile thick. of paper. Um, so the first, the first feature I ever worked on was The Rescuers Down Under. Now, I was working on, uh, I was working on um, Roller Coaster Rabbit as a cleanup artist. And we were just about to finish it up. There's, you know, we had a, a month or so left, and we knew that we were going to be moving on to The Rescuers Down Under, and they needed another animator. There was an open animator spot at, at our studio in Florida. We only had eight animators. One of them went away, so there was, they needed an eighth animator. So several of us wanted that job. There was probably about ten of us that wanted that job. And so we knew that the next film coming up was going to be The Rescuers Down Under, and so they had this character, Joanna. If you've ever seen The Rescuers Down Under, you know Joanna is the Goanna, monitor lizard. And so they gave us all this test to do. They gave us the layout, which I don't know if I have in here or not. But they gave us the layout and they said, okay, Joanna enters this room and does something. And so um, they gave us, I guess, a couple of weeks to animate it on our own time. We, we would do our full day's work at Disney, and then all of us would stay until two or three o'clock in the morning and try to get this animation test done because what was gonna happen at the end of it was we would submit the test, they would judge the test, and whoever's test they liked the best ended up getting the job. Luckily, I made a decision in this test to use the layout in, in, its, in, in, in a three-dimensional form. So there's a there's a box in the layout, this kind of uh, treasure chest kind of thing. And I had her kind of zip in, go on top of it, and then go behind it and come back out again. And they seemed to like that, that I actually used the layout and used the, the space within it because I ended up getting the job. Lucky for me. So this is, um, this is I mean, I've got piles of, of the drawings, but I just wanted to show you. A little more to your left, and let me focus real quick. There she is on top of the box. These are all out of order. Can you uh, just show one frame? Yep. And focus and good. So it jumps around a little bit because, but here you can see she goes up and she's on the box. That's the box right there. The box goes on the layout. These are all out of order. But that's her. That's, uh, I think she was animated by Kathy Zielinski. What is your opinion about taking regular life drawing classes as a training for an animator? Oh, we, we did that all the time. It's we, essential. It was essential, absolutely. We took, we took, uh, we were doing life drawings two or three times a week. I'm going to do this again, Dustin. Sorry. <laughs> show one, just show one frame? Yeah. Oh, there's the door. This is where she pokes her head in. These are, okay. these are cleaned up drawings. So I had to clean up my own animation. There's the door falls on her head. Yeah, these kind of bop all over the place. There's another. These are all just different drawings of her. I've got all kinds of stuff mixed in here. There she is, looking around, and then she takes off. You definitely like look through and organize it all and try to uh, digitize them. Yeah. These I can put back in order again very easily. Yeah, someone said, does it make you sad when you see the paper yellowing? No, it's just, that's... It's time. I, I, actually, I get really kind of nostalgic because it just shows me the age of these drawings. These drawings right here, I did, the, I think these are 30, 32 years old, these drawings. Yeah, 32 years ago I did those drawings. My age. Yep, you were just What was just that blue born. pencil you used for the iguana and why? I used the blue. It was, it's almost like a Prismacolor. I can't, it wasn't Prismacolor, though. I can't remember the name of the brand. Um, but it, it has this really nice, smooth, silky kind of feel. And so I, um, I, uh, I used it. And it, it's just a lot of guys at the studio were using it because it, it had a nice feel. That was, it was the end pencil to use at the time. This is from Prince and the Pauper. I worked on Prince and the Pauper very, very briefly. Now this is Peg Leg Pete s s coming in through the door. Cola Race? Cola Race is the one. That Col yes, that's it. 
Oh, no, no. It wasn't that. It was another. It was a different one. That's the one that I know Tim Hodge recommended. No, because color race, the color one. race were the smaller. This was a thicker, it, it was almost like a Prismacolor, uh, the, the, not the lead, it's not lead, but the drawing part of the pencil was thick, like a Prismacolor. Color race, I think, were, were thinner. Hmm. I can't remember what it was. But this is this one barely moves. But he steps in. I can't remember what he's saying here. Okay. Yeah. And then he leans in. It's barely any mo motion at all. And then he comes forward. <laughs> yep. I only animated a couple shots, and I and I don't think I did any of Mickey. I still have never drawn Mickey. I mean, I've, I've tried to draw Mickey, but I lived, I worked at Disney for 21 years. I thought you animated Mickey for something. No. Nope. You I, said you I, did. I animated, uh, I animated um, Dumbo, but I never animated Mickey. No, so you, you directed the, the Goofy short, and wasn't there one where, like, um, Mickey, it was like, almost like a... Not exactly horror per se, but it was like uh, Runaway Brain. Had like an evil side yeah, yeah, Runaway Brain. Yep. I didn't work on that. that was a so pretty, here's another one. So this is a uh, studio. Was it Orville or Wilbur that was in Rescuers Down Under? Mm -hmm. I can't remember which one was which. I think Wilbur was the first one. I think Orville was the first one. I think Wilbur. Anyway, oh. this is either Orville or Wilbur. And this is towards the end of the film. And it's, I mean, once again, as a new animator, I was a brand new animator. You always get the little shots, the shots that are just kind of filler, and that's what this was. So he's trying to get, he's trying to squeeze through a hole, and he gets yanked back, oh, back in. Let me get it for Okay. So here you can see him straining, ah, and then bloop, and he gets yanked back in. Ah, and, and, yeah, this shot goes by in like a second and a half. See the overlap in his scarf. There. But this was actually in the movie. This is in, but once again, it's just, they're, they're tiny little shots because I was a junior animator. I was freshly, freshly pr promoted. And so I would get these little. It was Wilbur. Oh, yeah, Wilbur, couple, there you go. A couple of people uh, are missing that. Oh, there he is again. Here's uh, Roger full of holes again. Do you know who animated um, the character Phil in Hercules? I don't. Oh, yeah, that was, is Phil the little guy? Yes. Yeah, it's Eric Goldberg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of looks like Eric Goldberg. He does. This is a shot here. This is where he's full of holes. Watch out, there's a thing there. Yeah. This is where he's full of holes, Roger Rabbit. And, and he just has to look up. This is animation that Mark Kausler had already done. And then he had left, and they needed him to look up in the shot. At the end, they added that, and so they asked me to. This is one of my first jobs: is just to have him look up. Huh? He goes, huh? Because this, I think, this is where he sees Baby Herman uh, about to go on the gears. About to go on the gears, exactly. You're too loud to go on the ride. Yep. I used to watch the shorts all all the time when I, when I was a kid. Can you erase those blue pencils? Not very well. Yeah, they're like a colored pencil, right? So. Oh, look at this. I just uh, said I animated, that, I animated Dumbo. Oh, yeah. I got Dumbo. Before you show that, I want to let people know that we have a big sale going on over at CreatureArtTeacher.com this week. We've extended our cyber sale. So if you use promo code CYBER2022, you can get an extra 20% off of all of our courses. And our courses this weekend are all up to 75% off. So our How to Paint Light course is 70% off. Our uh, Costume Figure Drawing course is 60% off. Oil Painting course is 60% off. Animal Drawing course is $100 off. And uh, Drawing Cartoon Mythical Creatures with Tim Hodge is just five bucks. And one of the biggest deals is the uh, figure drawing and character design bundle which gets you two big courses uh two of our most popular courses also is 80 percent off 
So head on over to creatureartteacher.com and check those out. Back to it, Aaron. All right. Check it out. Down shooter. Look at Dumbo. This is, um, I animated Dumbo for, this is when Euro Disneyland first opened. And um, it, was, uh, it was a commercial they were doing for Euro Disneyland. And, um, and so in the commercial, there's this hot air balloon. That's a nice one. I like that. There's a hot air balloon. It's live action. So there's these people in a hot air balloon flying over France. And Dumbo um, flies into the shot. And that's, that was my, my animation. And so that's what I did here. Once again, drawn on that blue pencil. And there he is, flying in. I've got a cell from this somewhere. There he is. Look at that. A cute little guy. He was really fun to animate. Let me, show, let me flip it for you. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it very well because he's way up at the top of the page. Dustin? Yes, sorry. Just thought I'd try to find that. Oh, find the commercial? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to find. Let me uh, get a focus. Okay. So here he is flying in. Try moving a little more to your left. There you go. And then he backs up. So the, the people are over on the right, obviously. Yeah, they were in a tram, if I recall. They were in a hot air balloon. Oh, hot air balloon. Yep. There he is, a little Dumbo. This is like 1990. Yeah. I animated this. Yeah. There he is, man. This one's cool. I forgot all about this. I forgot all about it. I mean, I forgot about this shot in particular. I remember it, I animated Dumbo, but I couldn't remember where it was or what I had done with it. Is there a course that on your website that you would recommend for a beginner? I was thinking about taking one of them, but I don't know which one to start with. Uh, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, we've got so many different things covering animation and character design and animal drawing and all kinds of stuff. It's, you, know, you can start with any of the courses and they're all beginner friendly. But if you, want to, if you want to start with animation, I would say take my introduction to animation. It's all the fundamentals and all of that. Then, then, you know, yeah, it's called the Complete Animation Course. Yeah, so it website. takes you through the fundamentals first, and then I'll take you through my process in animating a shot. And then I've got acting for animation. We've got uh, complex, uh, tackling complex issues with animation. Yeah, our advanced animation course, which is only $10 this weekend, by the way. Yeah. If you're um, if you're new to drawing in general and you're thinking about just getting into drawing, then I would recommend uh, you have a perspective drawing course that's really affordable. Yep. Uh, we have a course from Ronnie Williford on the basics of drawing, which is geared at a complete beginner. I think that's sixty or seventy percent. Uh, it's called "Let's Draw the ba Fundamentals of Drawing" with Ronnie Williford, and the. Uh, human anatomy course is always a great one because if you can learn to draw people, that'll really help you with everything else. Exactly, and that's a really popular course. Here's another one with Wilbur that goes in the same sh sequence of shots. This is him trying to get out. This one actually works a little better than the other one. You can see him the overlap. Sorry, Dustin. In my, in my workout today. Yes. So, is it, so this is, he's, he goes, uh, he tries to get out, and then uh, he's stuck. Uh, you can see the overlap on the scarf and his goggles even shoot out and hit him back in the head. Uh. <laughs> that was a fun one. There we go. So another shot of Wilbur from the Rescuers Down Under. These are all little shots from when I was a junior animator. What else do we have in here? <laughs> another Roger Rabbit shot. This one's so long. I don't know why there's this many drawings in here. It's really weird. They're kind of in a mixed up order. Let me flip through them and try to get them back in order here. So what I've got here, there it is coming through. Oh. I've 
got all kinds of stuff in here. They all, oh like, man, they jump all over the place in order. Rather than, these are some notes that Mark Henn did over the top of my drawings. Is it Mark Henn or Mark Kausler? But um, you're going to the down shooter, Dustin. Yes. Emma asks, are your courses pre-recorded or are they a Zoom? They're all pre-recorded, so all of our courses are learned at your own pace. Uh, when you purchase a course from Creature Art Teacher, you get the ability to download it and stream it, whatever works easier for you, and everything is yours to keep forever. Which is probably a great time to mention that we also have our biggest deal of the year going on right now, which is buy one, get one on memberships. Uh, so a the way a membership to our website works is it gets you everything on the website plus everything we release over the next 12 months for one low price and right now you can buy one get one free on membership so you can give one to a friend and keep one for yourself or you can split the cost or cheat and send them both to yourself however you want to do i found it oh you found the commercial yep you're kidding me yeah somebody else said they found it as well and i was they were trying to post a link but it wasn't working oh, hang on we need uh <laughs> and which Are you able to switch it over? There it is. There, they can't see it. Yeah, that's the animation right there. Send me the link, Dustin, and I'll, uh, I'll post it. <laughs> yeah, I'll that's so it funny. Way. Actually, we could probably show it on the uh, on the desktop or on uh, Dad's uh, computer. Yeah, but will it get flagged? It might. Yeah, it'll probably uh, get flagged. Gotcha. Go to the down shooter. Yeah, sorry. We can always play it muted. Oh, that's true. Good. But here's this is um, this is the very first shot I ever animated as an animator, as a as a. This is uh, Roger in the roller coaster, and uh, he's holding baby Herman, and you can see the balloon flopping all over the place, and his ears are flopping, but he's looking at camera. This is right after they flipped over. Uh, Jessica Rabbit, she was tied to the tied to the tracks. And they flip over her and he's looking back and then he turns to look what's ahead. I sent it to you on uh, Facebook. Thank you, sir. So there it is right there. And there's baby Herman. I love drawing baby Herman. He was a lot of fun <laughs> to draw. Here's looking back. Looking back at at uh, Jessica Rabbit. Some of these were a lot thicker than I thought, so we're, we're actually getting to the bottom of the pile already. But it's still a pretty fun little bit here. Taking a trip down memory lane. Yeah, we don't need to go two hours today anyway, like we always do. There's that. What else do we have in here? My first time animating a horse. Now this will make you guys feel better. Are you going to show any paintings today? No, no paintings today. Oh, it's all in reverse order. So, uh, for those of you that think that I've always drawn like this, like I do now, this will show you how much I've grown since I started, and this is when I was animating at Disney. So I've drawn the, the, the anatomy on this horse is so incredibly bad. I didn't know what I was doing. This is one stride of a horse running. And I feel like we're going to have a couple of viewers when they see this, they're going to be like, you, you call that bad? It moves okay, but if you look at the anatomy, the anatomy is horrible. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Yeah. It's just one stride of this horse running. It was. A loop that I was trying to do and this is one of the first you know bits of animal animation that I had done where I was trying to do realistic and I really didn't know what I was doing do you have and, any original Aladdin images you can show 
I do somewhere. I mean, that, there you go. Pretty the cycle pretty moves okay, but look at that drawing. I mean, that's just. I mean, it's a it's a bait. I mean, it's a basic <laughs> locomotion. But the anatomy, that's the thing, you know, over time it, it develops. And so for those of you that get impatient, just know that it, it develops over time. Oh, there's, well, here's where this is, this is the extra animation from, from Yao. <laughs> this is, this is where he's showing off his battle scars. This is very quick. This is where he's showing off his battle scars. So this is the other level, and this is his. That's all there is to it. She comes up and she, she, she looks looks through his battle scar, looks through his hole, the hole in his body, and then he comes crashing down. It was just a really quick thing that that was added to the animation. Right there. That's the whole pile right there in that drawer. Now, if we want to go a little bit longer, I do have some stuff in another drawer that I can pull out. I can bring in here. Let me put these back. So that was kind of cool. I hadn't, I hadn't gone through those drawings in years. Lots of fun little little bits of history there for me. Back in the drawers they go. Yeah. How are we doing on time? It's not yeah. even two o'clock yet. Oh, so we've it's been so it's almost it's been less hour. than an hour. Yeah. Less than an hour. Let me grab a couple more things and we'll we'll shoot for two o'clock. I got a couple more things here. There's my glasses. He's got to go find his glasses. And for those of you wondering, I just posted a link to the Dumbo commercial that Dustin found. We posted it in the comments on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And if you can't find it, you're watching this later and you don't see the comments, uh, just search Eurovision uh, promo video 1990 and it should come up. Euro, I'm sorry, Euro Disney promo video 1990. Euro Disney promo video 1990. So these are all piled in another drawer in my flat files. These are kind of fun. On YouTube. But these here, let's see how we're going to do this here. Let me take this and put this over here. All right, want to go to the down shooter? Yeah. So, these are from the Lion King. So these are all, and I went, uh, when we did our workshop a few weeks ago, our watercolor plein air workshop, we had everybody come down and the hurricane chased us out of the woods. Uh, we ended up having a dinner at my house and we were able to go through a lot of this stuff. I was able to go through this uh, with a lot of them at, uh, in person, it was a lot of fun. But these are all drawings that I was doing of Nala. I created Nala in the Lion King. And so these were drawings that I did while trying to design her. And I've got hundreds of these drawings. And I think I've gone through these before uh, on video before. But pulling the, you know, these out is a lot of fun. You know, back in the day, there was no digital drawing and painting. So I would draw and, uh, well, not to the degree that we do now. So I would do these drawings on paper and I would use markers to color them in. And, and one of the other ways that we, we got these approved, I was working in Florida and the, the directors were in California. Mark Henn, who animated young Simba and myself, we, I animated young Nala. We were at the Florida studio. And so we would do our design drawings and then we'd have to FedEx them and send them to the directors so they could see them. And uh, we would have phone meetings over the phone and talk about the drawings. And then that's how we kind of worked through the whole process. But these are all different little sketches 
of Nala, like so. I can lift these up a little bit. It's kind of neat. Are those all colored pencils? There's colored pencils and markers. This, believe it or not, this is an early idea for Raja. A different, a new, a kind of very early idea sketch. These were tiger drawings that I did when, uh, when I was assigned to animate Raja, create Naja, Naja. <laughs> I create a lot of Naja. Naja. Uh, <laughs> Raja. Um, I did a lot of studies. So these are all little sketches that I did learning how to draw tigers. These are little thumbnails. I did hundreds of these little thumbnails. That's for Brother Bear. I did hundreds of these little thumbnails, you know, coming up with compositional ideas for shots in the movie. So that's what all these are. Lots and lots and lots of these. These are just done with ink and marker. Here's an early design drawing of an idea for the main ancestor for Mulan. These are all in, they're, they're all in mixed up order. I have to go through some time and kind of put everything back in order. But I've got piles of stuff like this. These are back to uh, Raja ideas. These are early Raja drawings. Different ideas on drawing him. Little thumbnail ideas right here. Quick sketches. There's another one. So you can see he's fairly different in these shots than what he ended up in in the film. I've got him right over here, sitting right on my shelf. The maquette. Here's some more here. Hundreds of drawings we would do in the design process to come up with what our characters were going to look like. This is one that was a bit more realistic in the way that he's built. But you can see, especially in this one, see how fluid he is? I was trying to match the design style of Al Hirschfeld. Al Hirschfeld was a caricature artist back in the day, and uh, the art director on Aladdin really wanted to, to emulate his style. And so, like, the genie is very much an Al Hirschfeld-looking design. So I was trying to get that same fluidity in the, in the tiger's design. So these are all different, different ideas. Here I was drawing his silhouette to try to get this very sleek kind of silhouette to him. And here we Erica are back said, back to go ahead. Erica says those are beautiful and Gabby says, "Hey everybody." Hey Here's Gabby. Something. Here we are back to sketching real tigers. These are all just quick sketches. I want to talk about uh, bears. Is a grizzly. oh congratulations, Erica! By the way, on uh, getting your credit with my brother's animated short. Oh, nice! Go ahead. Uh, is Sorry. a grizzly or a uh, Kodiak bear uh, bigger? Well, grizz a, a Kodiak bear is a grizzly. They're they're the same species, but they're they're subspecies. So, generally, a, when you say a grizzly, it's usually the interior bears we have in the lower forty-eight. And then when you get into Alaska and the coast, they'll call them brown bears. But brown bears are technically still grizzly bears. And uh, the, grizzly, the, the brown bears that live along the coast, they get a lot of protein in their diet and fat and that, that sort of thing uh, through eating salmon. And so because of that, they are huge. And uh, so they, they're quite a bit bigger. Uh, but but they're, they are the same species. So a Kodiak and a... And a grizzly species. are the same species, yep. Just a Kodiak is a giant version of a grizzly. There's, here I was so kind of doing a study of obviously the stripes on the tiger. Here is eating a chicken. Look at all those chickens. Look at all those chickens. <laughs> all 
I have lots and lots of these little sketches trying to learn how to draw tigers. All this was in preparation for Raja. Here's an early character sketch. Here's one that got a little damaged. And now we're back to Nala. <laughs> there's, there's no rhyme or reason to these. So here's some early sketching ideas for Nala. When you worked on the Lion King, did you really bring lions in to use as reference? Yes, we did. Um, not all the time, but in, in preparation, we, we brought lions into a sound stage and, and drew them from life. Where did you study that tiger reference back then? Uh, there, there, was, um, there was a place called Tiger's Eye in Sarasota, Florida that I went to. Uh, they had captive tigers that I drew. And then, so I drew them from that. And then I also had National Geographic uh, VHS videos because everything was on VHS. And I drew from those as well. So these are more ancestor sketches, ideas for what the ancestors might look like in Mulan, the ghosts in the backyard. I've got so many hundreds and hundreds of drawings of young Nala ideas of what she might look like. I mean, I literally would sit in my office for eight hours a day and just do drawings after drawing after drawing after drawing like this and just see what would hit. And it, it was a struggle. It took a long time before I hit something that I liked. <laughs> Rachel Taylor asks, how much for a uh, Nala drawing? <laughs> They're not for sale. For people joining late, I want to let people know that we've got a live workshop coming up on uh, Saturday, December 17th. Aaron is going to be teaching animation and procreate. We know a lot of you have procreate and you draw and animate and procreate. And uh, we thought it would be fun or Aaron thought it would be fun to do a live event uh, where you get to spend the day animating along with him. He's going to teach you his approach to animating and procreate. And if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can learn all about it. Spots are limited. And this is also your last weekend to get $1 brushes, texture packs, uh, and photo packs. So if you are interested in picking up some of Dustin's amazing artist photo reference packs, Aaron's got a, a big cat pack. We've got a bunch of brushes and texture packs on sale fur brushes, charcoal brushes, all kinds of stuff. Uh, head on over to creatureartteacher.com. Those are just $1 and that ends on Monday. So check it out. But not only that, like if you, for the, for the $1 packs, if you add in the, the cyber 2022 code that gives you 20% off, it brings yeah, it down to 20% off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It gets 20% off. And so it ends up costing only 80 cents at that point. Yep. Yep. So that's just, so get them while, while it's that low. Okay, switch back over. Yes. Enough of the advertising. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these are more, so you, you see too, I just changed up uh, pencils quite a bit too. I like to, you know, just try different pencils as I would design. These are really early on. Sometimes I'd work in, you know, pencils. So these are pen drawings, little steel pe point pen drawings. Sometimes they're pencil, like these. All kinds of different ideas. And you'll notice, I wasn't, I was still learning the anatomy back then. Even though I was getting ready to animate on The Lion King, I wasn't an expert with the, the anatomy yet. And so you'll notice a lot of the poses don't really change much because I, I didn't have the knowledge yet. But here I was playing with her expressions, trying to get, you know, a, a variety of expression right there. Here was learning a bit more about the anatomy, trying to get, you know, get that right. Why was that one image scribbled out? Because I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that you didn't like? The, the, just... the far eye. I, I, had, I, was, I was having a problem with the far eye in a three-quarter view to get it to look right. A lot of these drawings here, um, once I got them to finish, 
they ended up going to uh, um, the, uh, the merchandising. They went to the merchandising part of the company. So a lot of the drawings that I did in, during this process ended up on bed sheets and lunch boxes and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Here she is again. Now this is interesting. This is, uh, there's something there that wasn't there before, that song with Beauty and the Beast. This is where he's holding the birds and she touches them for the first time and she looks over at them. These are the thumbnails I did for animating that shot. I sat down and was trying to come up with the posing and the expressions and, and all that. And then once I came up with it, then I, I animated it. And that's what, uh, but this is where the idea for that shot that ended up in the movie, this is where that came from. And then some more uh, life drawing of lions. This is, these are the lions that they actually brought into the studio. There's a little cub that was drinking. Very quick little sketch. Uh, Arturo asks, uh, did you have a mirror in your office so you could flip your drawings to see uh, imperfections? No. I didn't use a mirror, uh, ever, actually. Um, I would flip my, I, if I wanted to see how a drawing looked, I would just hold it up to the light and look at it from behind. And that's how I would reverse it. You know, just hold it up like this. Can you switch the camera? Yeah. You just hold it up and I'd look at it that way and I'd see it in reverse and I could see if I needed to make changes. But I never used a mirror for, you know, animation or anything like that. So there she is there. There's another little turn, head turnaround, three quarter. Someone says, view. I hope you post this video on YouTube. It would be cool to rewatch. <laughs> These videos, our live streams are always up on YouTube and Facebook after yep. the stream. These will all be on there. Is that a, the red pencil, is that a Prismacolor? No, the red pencil was color race. That was color race. So these are Xeroxes out of books for reference. So for people that don't know the history of animation, <clears throat> the reason they used to draw with the red and blue color race pencils, you'll see this a lot in animation, they would do their rough line in red and blue, and then they would go over with a graphite or darker pencil is because when they would do the Xerox process for when Xeroxing came in, the red or blue pencil didn't show up on the Xerox machine. So you exactly. could only get the nice clean yeah. line. Somet you know, sometimes it would be blue that wouldn't pick up, but, but it would pick up red. And other times it would be red that, would, that wouldn't be picked up, but it would pick up blue. So it changed back and forth. These are some more little thumbnail, oops, I'm going the wrong way, ink thumbnail ideas for Brother Bear. This is a shot, I've shown this before. This is a shot right here of uh, Jasmine. I animated a little bit of Jasmine after I finished Raja in uh, Aladdin. And this is where she gets up and she, she's sitting at her, at her uh, vanity and she's, she's brushing out her hair. Then her father comes in and she goes, oh father, I just had the most wonderful time. I'm so happy. And she twirls around, and so these were the, the little thumbnail ideas for her twirling around. These are the sketches for that. Now these are cool, and I've shown these before as well. This is where, in the Beauty and the Beast, where he goes, that hurt, where she's trying to bandage him. I did hundreds and hundreds, thousands of sketches coming up with the posing and the, the, uh, you know, the thumbnails for that sequence. And so the ones that I picked out, I taped down and I followed them like a roadmap. And that's what this is right here. This is that, this is very old. This is like 32, 33 years old. You can see I've got bugs have eaten it when I had it in storage and I had a storage unit. So it's, it's really del delicate, but it's, this is, this is where that, that whole sequence from Beauty and the Beast, where they get into the fight, it all started right here with these <laughs> ideas. And these are some of Glenn Keane's little notes to me down here, different ideas. And then this is, um, same thing, but different sequence. So this is back at something there that wasn't there before. You can see, where I showed you earlier where I did the sketches and tried to come up with the ideas. These are the ones that I ended up liking. So in the upper left, 
This is where the birds actually jump into his hands and start eating. And so you can see he gets really excited and he looks over at Belle and then he softens. And then he looks down and then... Uh, bring it up a little more. Oh, this way? Yeah. The, the, you can't see the... And then the bottom, the bottom one in this, and then, uh, where he says, no, it, it can't be, or something like that, where he's doubting himself. And so he goes from really happy up on top to kind of doubting himself. He sees her walk away and he's like, no, nah, this can't be real. And so that's the change of emotion. So I wanted to make sure that that came across. So these were the, the, the initial sketches for that. And then here we are back again with the argument in front of the fireplace. And here's Glenn's notes to me on the side. Glenn Keane's notes. It's all about silhouette, trying to get clear silhouette. So he, he worked with me on that. Here's more little thumbnails. I did the birds in that se section too. So these are little sketches I did of the birds. And, and then uh, there's a scene where she says um, in the beginning of the movie where she's crying in the, dun in the dungeon and he's already dragged the father away, Maurice, and he comes back in and she says, you never let me say goodbye. And she's crying. And so he, he's thinking... And in the, in the movie, he kind of scratches the back of it. He's thinking and scratches his head. And, uh, and he goes, you, you, what, what's he say? I'll show you to your room. I think, I, I think that's the... A little more up and left? Well, the upper, the upper left... Oh, there it is. The upper left one is where I came up with the idea for him to kind of scratch his ear. And so when you watch the movie, you'll see him scratch his ear. And, uh, and then he says, well, I'll show you to your room. And so that's, that's where the idea, this is the page where I came up with the idea for that. So, you know, thumbnailing is extremely important. You know, it's where you really plan out and you come up with the ideas for animation without wasting time animating. YouTube question, do you get all these ideas just from feeling them or did you look at a mirror? No, just from feeling them. I never use a mirror. Never use a mirror. I just feel it. But here's, um, once again, more of the argument sequence. And on the right are Glenn Keane's notes to me. Uh, once again, if you, for those of you that don't know who Glenn Keane is, he was the supervising animator of The Beast. And I was one of five animators that animated The Beast under him. So he animated, we all animated The Beast, but he was in charge of keeping The Beast consistent. So he would give me notes on his acting and all kinds of stuff. Have you ever considered animating these drawings to preserve them? Um, well, Lamin laminated. Oh, laminating. Sorry. I was going to say they, they are animated. They're in the yeah, movie. <laughs> no, laminate. Actually, laminating destroys the drawing. So no, I don't want to laminate them, but I do need to put them in, in some kind of Hi atmospheric <laughs> vault, <laughs> vault or something. But these are all more of the sketches, more ideas. Future live streams will come from our subterranean vault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And this is where he, at the very end of that sequence, where she, she goes, now hold still. And he goes, mm, or this might sting a little. And he goes, mm, and that's what that, and then she goes, by the way, thank you for saving my life. And it, you can see him soften. You can see the note that Glenn sent me. He softens and then looks at her. And, I, and I'm, I'm trying to see here what he actually says to her. You're welcome. But he says, you're welcome, yeah, but I'm trying to see, oh, the I want to see what Glenn, what Glenn wrote to me. These are the notes I got from Glenn Keane. And uh, he wrote, self-absorbed in his pain. And then the realization, she's acknowledged his good deed. And then his reaction, and he looks at her in mild wonder. So these were notes from Glenn about, you know, what he's feeling. And, and, and what I, you know, what I needed to take into account. So there's that. Here's some drawings from Ruben Aquino, some Xeroxes of uh, some early sketches of Adult Simba. I just like the drawings. And so there he is. Adult Simba from Ruben Aquino. Ruben Aquino, uh, who is in charge of Adult Simba in the movie, um, went on to the film a year before any of us. And he spent that year 
researching uh, African animals, gathering reference uh, for locomotion. And so by the time we all came on, he had done all this uh, research for us and we had all these binders that we were able to use uh, when it came time to animate. He was a huge resource. So Ruben Aquino was in charge of, he was a supervising animator of adult Simba. These drawings are so appealing. He also did Ursula from The you, Little Mermaid. You did ended up doing a couple shots of Simba, both young and adult, right? I did, yep, yeah, I did. As well when as I finished Nala. up Nala. I basically just went on to different characters. Anything that was extra that hadn't been done, I would help them finish it up. So these are some little notes I got from Mark Henn. Little expression notes from Mark Henn. We're back to Nala again. More little sketches. I've got so, I mean, I've got piles and piles of these. It gets old after a while. But these are all notes. Little notes to myself. More. Nala poses. That's a lot of the same drawings over and over again. There she is. So this was a sketch that I did for uh, my cleanup, the, my, the, my assistant animating or uh, assistant animator who was in charge of her cleanup, and then he did this drawing over the top. So there you can see. You know, I would do something like this in the rough animation. That's what my drawing would look like right there. Kind of rough. See that? But then my assistant would come through and he would turn it into that. That's what gets scanned into the computer and gets painted. So that basically, you can see, that's the process of... Let me see how it lines up right here. That's the process going from rough to clean up. So once again, these are, these are drawings that I did for the directors. And I sent these out and then I wrote a note. I did these over the drawings I sent out yesterday. I think they're a bit more successful. I can't remember what I sent out the day before. <laughs> but these are sent to the directors. So once again, it's just, it's just piles and piles of drawings. You know, little notes to myself on what she might look like. This one's fun. This is uh, some expression ideas right here. A little character sketch from a, a piece of test animation that I did. This is the workbook, the workbook layout idea for uh, Can't Wait to be King when all the animals kind of pile up on top of each other. So that's pretty much it. I've got so many hundreds of these drawings that are just all basically the same. Just tiny little changes here and there. Um, Adjusting a you know a nose, adjusting an eye, just trying to come up with you know different different ideas. Here's some you know even though they're cartoons, these are some anatomy little anatomy sketches that we did to understand what's going on underneath the skin on our characters. It's all about you know believability, right? And so you want that anatomy. You know, you want to think about your characters having skin and, and muscle and bone and everything else under their, under their skin. Another character sketch from animation. What character did you struggle the most with designing? Designing? Uh, probably the ancestors and, and uh, Yao. Designing them because they, they had to, you know, they, 
they went through several different design processes and and they had to match a certain style. Yeah. So once again, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different sketches in here. What character was the most fun to animate? Probably Yao was a lot of fun and Beast was a lot of fun. Beast was hard, but he was a lot of fun to animate. And then finally, there's our last one, our last little sketch. There's a little color series of expressions that I sent to the directors. And this is just literally a drop in the bucket of drawings that we've got. And it'd be fun to go through. I've got thousands and thousands of Mulan drawings stashed away that we need to get into. Actually, I, don't, I can't remember where I put those. But, um, but there you go. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, uh, we've got a lot of different sales going on still. Holiday sales. If you want to run over those really quick again, Nick. Yeah, if you head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, we've got a huge weekend sale. And if you, uh, many of our courses are up to 75% off. And if you use code CYBER2022, you can get an additional 20% uh, off your entire order, uh, including courses like our oil painting course are 60% off, how to draw light or how to paint light is 70% off, uh, drawing costume figures is 60% off. We've got courses that are just $5, courses from Ronnie Williford that are 70% off. Uh, Aaron's advanced animation course is ten, just $10 this weekend. Um, we've also got our live event coming up, uh, which is live animation in Procreate on yeah. Saturday, December 17th. That's going to be a lot of fun. Spots are very limited on that and going fast. You head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live to learn more about that. And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this is your last weekend to get $1 brushes, texture sets, and photo packs uh, over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Check them out. And we've got three new courses uh, that are coming out uh, very soon. One from David Coleman, Ken Spaduso, and a new one from Aaron Blaze. And those are all on 50% off pre-order at CreatureArtTeacher.com. There you we go. We also have the uh, membership, buy one, get one. Oh, yeah. The best Still deal going in the animation. On. Oh, yeah. In art you get education. It. One of the things I love about the membership that we, we, you know, we're always trying to add value to our membership. And um, uh, so not only, you know, if you become a member, first of all, if you do this deal, it's give one, you get one, then you can give one, or you can actually use it for yourself. You can, Shh. yeah, but it's I'm just saying, yeah. So you can do it that way. But one of the other things we're doing, uh, so what do you get for becoming a member? Well, first of all, you have access to everything that's on the site. That's including the brushes, uh, over 600 hours of, of, uh, of, of, of instructional content, art, uh, animation, story, all kinds of stuff. You have all of that. You have a discount on merchandise. Um, you get discounts on any of the live events that we do, all of that. And then you also, we any new ways. courses that come out during the year, um, of during your membership, you get those that come in automatically as well. And then on top of that, while we're making Snow Bear, which is going to be over the next year or so, um, I'm live streaming that twice a week. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm animating and working. I'm, well, I'm working on Snow Bear every day. But every Tuesday and Thursday, as a member, you can join me in my studio via live stream. So that's two extra live streams a week. Yeah, exactly. And I'm showing you the process of making this animated short. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it since July. And um, they tend to be nice and small, intimate. I'm playing my music. We're talking about stuff. I'm talking about the inspiration. You see me fumble through it. You see me make mistakes. You see me dig myself out. You see all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be, it's a lot of fun. And you really do get to see the nitty gritty, how the sausage is made as we, so, you know, so to speak. You know, all the kind of the stuff that you don't see when you watch a finished, you know, piece of animation, you don't see all the stuff that goes into it. Well, or this is your opportunity. If you're vegan, like my yes, right. Uh, but this is your opportunity to see all the ups and downs in the process that goes with it. So I'm really happy with that. And we have a lot of fun doing it. So there you go. That's part of become a, becoming a member. We're trying to really give you value and, uh, and we care about. We care about you guys. And we so do have two doing. membership plans. We've got the annual plan that lets you download and keep everything. And then we've got a monthly streaming option as well if you're looking for something that's more affordable. And if you're just memberships to death, we always sell all of our courses yeah. a la carte. So there you go. So there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed kind of walking through memory lane, going through and looking at some of my old Disney artwork. 
and uh, a little bit of history there. It's kind of cool. I know some of you guys grew up on some of these films that we created, and and uh, and I look back on those days, and it just it seems like yesterday. And uh, I really love kind of going through and remembering all those times. And actually, so I got something. I've that. got a little request for the people watching this video. If you like this video, you know, consider subscribing. But also, if you could share this video on your social media, especially if you have friends that are animation. Yeah. The animation and stuff like that they might yeah. get a kick out of seeing this too and that really helps us a lot um you know if you're parts of any animation groups or or just you know art community friends that you think would be into this because these these strolls down memory lane are something that no one else on the internet can offer so yeah, it's true check it out I'm all right you guys so i hope you have a great weekend i hope you enjoyed today go on out there put some beauty back into the world that's what we do as artists and i'll talk to you next week thanks Cowboy Bye. Bebop.